Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. Cheating ain't no magic trick. There's no top hats. There's no bunnies. People aren't getting sawed in half yet, but there's usually some grand reveal. Today on our space, we reveal all the secrets. At first, failing a test, you wish you hadn't. After almost 10 years, I found out my daughter is not mine biologically. First off, I haven't used this throwaway account in six years. I'm surprised it's still active. Anyway, I got it together with my wife about 15 years ago. She came with a pre-made family of a daughter and two boys. Then in October of 2012, she got pregnant. We weren't trying to conceive, but we weren't actively trying to prevent either. The date of conception seemingly matched up and a beautiful baby girl was born August of 2013. I have been led to believe until this last Saturday, that she was 100% mine, and I never questioned it. But over the weekend, I took our youngest son, stepson, but you all know I see him as mine. To a show choir event and met up with an old friend from around the time of my daughter's birth, a friend I met through my wife. This friend and I had a few drinks, as she said, she needed to get something off her chest that she's been holding secret for years and told me everything. I was shocked to say the least. The next day, I called and confronted my wife and initially, she denied it, but admitted to having sex with the actual father. I hung up on her, and I had three hours to drive home with my son, all the while ignoring her calls. When I got home, she then pulled me aside away from the kids and confessed all. The little girl is my world, and I do not have any intention of turning my back on her. It's not her fault that this happened. Put her mother wants me to try to move past her in discretion and stay together. Stating what we have built since is strong, and I shouldn't tell my daughter about this as the real father had, has no intentions of being part of her life. I do not think I can forgive her for this. It's too big. I'm so angry right now at her and all her friends that knew but kept silent. I can't leave because I don't want her to state that I abandoned my family. I'm afraid that if I do keep this secret for my daughter, that she will one day find out and hate me for it. If I stay, I can't talk to anyone about it. They will be confused and astounded that I stuck around it would make me feel like less of a man. I would bottle it up and let it eat me up and then rage quit my life. Update. My son was at his cousin's house for a sleepover after his event. I went out with my aunt and uncle and the friend showed up at the pub we went to. When my aunt and uncle went home, I stayed to chat more. Update. 1,182,023, I have a DNA test ordered. Wife is in search of alternative residence. She wants couples therapy. I considered shortly until more came to light. I commented a few times below that she had been sending likely bio dad updates with school pictures. Also, went to see him five years ago and took him to lunch. Update 1,192,023. Not much else to update today. Waiting on DNA tests to arrive. Better house. We'll have more throughout the weekend as kids will be gone, and we can finally have it out with no tiny ears to hear. We'll record audio for everything. Update 12,123. Quick one. Not much to say yet actually spent an evening with welcome company. Test is still en route. Live in a small community with no hospitals that provide DNA testing. Test won't arrive until Wednesday. Hope to have results by Friday. Update two weeks later. It's been a while since my last update. I got the results today from the paternity test. 0.0% paternal probability. Initially, when I found out from supposed friend, I wanted to go nuclear ruin lives and the like. But after sitting and giving myself time to cool off, I decided that would only hurt the kids. I still see her as my daughter, but now I have much deeper waters to tread and how and when to talk to her about it. Wife and I will be divorcing peacefully. I won't give up my rights to sue either her or buy her dad. Wife did find my last post and spiraled down a rabbit hole reading the comments. Was interesting to see her reactions to the variety of thoughts you guys shared about her. Now, it's time to move forward. 
Let's see what some community thoughts are. Tree Trunk Trick says, Wow. She cheated, lied, and tried to pass off the child that isn't yours. I would never be able to look at her again. I would be disgusted by her actions. Of course, it's not the children's fault, but I would leave her butt fiddle yesterday. 548 says she successfully passed off another child as his for 10 years. Daisy Iris wants to say, Dip, if he signed the birth certificate, he is on the hook financially. Sounds like a wonderful, caring, and generous man. His concern for his daughter is a testament to his good character. That was unnecessarily hurtful. Wife is lacking in character. So sorry. Quicksilver1964 wants to say. She wanted to stay when she was still in contact with the father and bio father knew the kid was his and was receiving updates? Nope. Wouldn't be surprised if she was still cheating. Heavy Ad 5264 has this to say. It's too easy for her to tell you to just move past this since she wasn't the one who got betrayed. You have all the right in the world to divorce her, and this doesn't mean you have to stay away from these kids' lives. She not only cheated on you, but hid this from you for 10 years and never pretended to tell you the truth. She cheated on you, even though you treated her sons like yours. Just break, man. This woman doesn't deserve you. Right. So, she was planning on basically contacting him throughout your whole relationship, and occasionally meeting up with him to do God knows what, while you're led to believe that she's being faithful as if it's best to move on she's screwing around on you. Your relationship has really been built on a lie. I'm so sorry you had to find out this way. And I'm sorry your friends kept it from you for so long. I think you're doing the right thing by moving on. And I also think your daughter has a right to know. No matter what, she will always be your daughter. You raised her, but she definitely has the right to know the truth. And then she'll have her own opinions about her mother. There's no way you can trust this woman again, and that trust will likely be lost between her and her daughter as well. What are your thoughts? Next, the look of death. They're just so astonishingly nasty at the end. One thing that seems consistent with our stories is that cheaters get so mean and nasty at the end. Like they can't stand the side of us and would prefer if we were dead. I will never forget that look of pure hatred contempt he gave me after he revealed his adultery. Blaming the person you betrayed for what you did and treating them with such contempt as if the betray was actually betrayer. How does the cheater even get there? Such a mind f. Steph's wife from the community wants to say this. Cheaters have to have someone to blame for their awful behavior, and that, that person is almost always the betrayed, never themselves or even the affair partner. Even though up to the point of discovery, their behavior was loving, perhaps, and there was no sign of turmoil. But as soon as their crappy behavior and lack of morals comes to light, the accusations start. You have to be the monster. You have to be the reason why they did what they did. Nobody wants to be the villain in their own story. Cheaters need people to understand why they did what they did, and perhaps excuse it. And that's where we, the betrayed, all of a sudden become the devil. They are projecting their hatred and disgust with themselves onto us. At least that's what I tell myself. Gandaleo of Figaro's second son thinks, cheater equals the victim, who was forced to make themselves live and love again through any means necessary after being brought so low by life's brutal circumstances. A fair partner equals the hero who risked it all to show them what it means to be loved, and help them finally see and save themselves. Petray equals the villain, who made them miserable, doesn't see them for who they are truly are. And the mega crime of all mega crimes, your boring stability isn't capable of supplying them with the dopamine rush they so richly deserve. Dave Bowman in 1968 chimes in. Of course, they hate you. You caught them with their hand in the cookie jar, spoiled their fun, and now they look bad. Of course, the problem isn't their behavior, it's your existence. Darko Annie says, first thing he did was starting to shout with me when he saw me after I discovered everything. He blamed me all night with most ridiculous excuses, and after that, they started the effing lies. I will never forget that, but yeah, 
that's how they are. They can't live with themselves, so they have to humiliate you and make you feel as bad as they are feeling. Lake Silence chimes in. They have no self-esteem. The way the partners they get cheated on ruin the only thing that gives them happiness by catching on to their BS. They're playing a game that they can't win, and they know it. Cue to blame shifting, manipulating, and name calling. The best way to deal with a cheater is to simply shut the F up. Walk away and find happiness elsewhere. I think they have to get mean and nasty in order to justify their own behavior. Like they're projecting themselves onto you. All of the hatred and guilt they have for their own actions and placing that onto the person they cheated on. Because why would they take responsibility when it's easier for them to place the blame? It's harder to face up to what they did. Thoughts. Next, a cheater. Trying to control the narrative. A life update after my acts of four years cheated on me with my best friend. Hi, everyone. I haven't posted here before, and it's been a while since I've been on this account, but I've been feeling a little sentimental from reflecting on the past. Around a year ago, my ex of four years was cheating on me with my best friend multiple times and telling him that she loves him. After I found out, that same best friend added everyone to a private group chat to further manipulate them to their side while trying to blackmail me. She eventually reached out and asked for my forgiveness, and I made the dumb decision of staying with her for a few months before realizing she was continuing to be as controlling manipulative and toxic as she was the entire time I was still with her. She made me cut off ties with all of my friends to stay and be with her, so she was the only one that was part of my life at the time. Even after things between us broke off, she had the audacity to ask her own sister to try and spy on me. I've been told that she has been telling other people that we broke up because I was controlling, but she neglects to mention the cheating and the fact that she was the one keeping track of my work schedule and having a camera on in my room, practically 24-7 and flipping out which he doesn't see me home in time. Since then, I've spent a lot of my own and had a lot of anxiety when it came to interacting with anybody. But my old friends were very understanding and reached back out when they realized I was no longer with my ex and were very patient with me. Over time, I felt more like my old self, being able to joke around with my friends and make them laugh. I met another girl who loves that about me and has been very kind and understanding. It makes me feel safe. Last year has been one of the most toughest times in my life, but I'm feeling more optimistic about the next one. Happy New Year's everyone. The community has some encouraging words and Las Vegas says, 2022 was the worst year of my life. I just want a better year. Wish you the best. Empty Education 4240 says, excellent to hear this positive update. Sometimes all you need is to remove the negative from your life. Plus enough time to heal. Glad to hear your friends were patient and understanding. It's sometimes harder to find good friends than good partners. You hit the jackpot here. Keep up the good recovery. Happy New Year. Ekapi. Nice positive ending, but yeah. We often have to learn the hard way. It's a shame you stayed with her longer than you had to. This is another fabulous example of how cheaters can't take responsibility and have to control the narrative. Have you been in a similar situation? Let us know below. Up next, the big reveal. How did you find out? A few months before walking down the aisle, I get a voicemail from a guy. I have heard of saying he was in a relationship with my fiancé. He then proceeds to email me. My email is public, pictures of them on dates and doing activities. She didn't know I had the pictures. She denied ever seeing him and the house of cards came crumbling down. Let's hear some stories. The first community reaction comes from stuttering John as a loser. Well, lots of clues, but the most obvious one was I was initiating sex with her. And as my fingers touched her girly bits, I felt something. I grasped the object with two fingers and pulled it out, another man's condom. Rolo93 wants to share. When I was visiting the city I used to live in, and after a year of moving back to my hometown, I reconnected with my ex I was dating there. She told me a story of when she was visiting home in summer of 2017. She slept with one of her friends and felt weird about it. 
only she forgot that she was with me at the time when her story took place. I asked her, was that before or after you face time to me? I have it together has a story that goes like this. Well, I guess it would depend which time. One time I was washing his jeans, he went out the night before. Came home around 5 a.m., and his wedding ring was in his pocket. One time, I found his Snapchat messages with a girl. Messages were heavy, flirty, and I had so much last night. I found Facebook messages that he would delete not knowing I read them beforehand. And a week after I told him I wanted a break, mind you, we were still living together and sadly, we were still sleeping together he slept with one of my, at the time, best friends who originally came over to comfort me. These are just times I can think of off the top of my head. He was a piece of crap. Glad for that to be over. The next sharing session comes from Wellman81. First off, what's the ending to your story? Did you cancel the wedding and leave her, or are you staying trying to work it out? Mine was back in 2007. Remember MySpace? That top friends list in the left-hand corner of your profile that probably destroyed God knows how many friendships. Yeah, about that. My girlfriend at the time and I were having some issues that mainly had to do with her wanting me to change into someone I wasn't. Well, one day I noticed I was bumped down from her top friends list and the number one guy was her neighbor who was, of course, just a friend. I, being the boyfriend, started stooping and found explicit messages between not only them, but other men as well. She of course denied any physical cheating, but I wasn't stupid and ended the relationship right then and there. Later on, she tried to convince me to give her another shot and explained that she was sending those messages because she wasn't feeling fulfilled in her relationship. Basically, just another entitled prima donna, who wanted some Don Juan kind of crap. I denied her another chance and told her to do better in the future. She's still single with a laundry list of failed relationships. The OP replies, I called off the wedding. It came to light with the pictures that my ex's mom knew about this other guy and even had the two over for dinner. People say how terrible it must have been to go through. Actually, the cheating was great because it made my decision so easy. Scary alternative 11 shares. Oh, it's my time to shine. Okay, not really shine, but I've got a pretty good one for you. So I had spent a Friday night at my sister's house. It was a pre-planned days in advance to spend some quality time with her and my nephew, and the now ex-husband, and I were supposed to go on a dinner date at my favorite restaurant after he got off work the next day. So I get home Saturday afternoon and I'm laying on the couch just surfing the old dinner webs on my tablet waiting for him to get home. I'm just wasting time doing nothing really. And I hear the little ping that goes off on my tablet for when you get an email. The funny thing is I almost never ever check the email I have linked to this device it's the one I use for Amazon and subscriptions and whatnot. But, but for some reason, this time I clicked on it to check it out. However, I had long forgotten and I'm guessing he did as well, that he had also linked his email to that tablet. So I clicked the notification and it takes me to his email. Enter the email from the girl he had met on Craigslist and spent the night with the night before while I was at my sister's house. There was a whole thread of him answering her ad, her replying, him getting her address, and him telling her he had a few drinks, so he was gonna Uber over. So yeah, I wasn't snooping. I wasn't looking for anything. It was purely by accident, but here's the best part. Not really, insert sarcasm here. Why did I go spend the night with my sister? You might ask, why did I have a dinner date planned to my favorite restaurant with my husband? Because it was my birthday. That's right. He chose my birthday of all days to cheat on me with some random broad from Craigslist. It took five years for me to be able to celebrate my birthday again. Mr. Oz Midnight shares his story. Hi, all. How it happened to me was just red flags, staying out longer and he was my best friend at the time. We used to scuba dive together, and then my wife would never come with us. Then all of a sudden, she wanted to come along with us. And they were starting to chat together, more and more. Then when we went out in the boat, he used his car and would never let anyone drive his car. Just remember this for later and she hated boats, 
Then she started coming out with us. And when we got back to the boat ramp, he started asking me to get his car and over time, they used to go out for a short run while I got the car and trailer. There was no need for them to do that, so that was one of those moments. And I started to pay attention to what was happening. Then one day, she wanted to go have a weekend with her best friend and wouldn't let me know where or contact number. This was before mobile phones. Anyway, we owned a small business and our receptionist told me that she didn't meet her friend, but him, and they ran off together and left me there with two young sons. So it comes in different ways, and as you believe in your partner, you don't see the red flags that are there, or you just dismiss them. So that's my story. Why deny when there is picture evidence? It's not like you suddenly have a doppelganger. That is so funny to me. Like just stop being a child and fess up. You got caught. You tried to play the system, but the system played you. Now break it off. Think it's like an addiction most of the time. They get addicted to the chase and the possibility of getting caught. What's hilarious is that these people were dumb enough to cheat in the first place and so they're dumb enough to do something that's going to get them caught. They think their partners are stupid, which we aren't. What about you? How did you find out? Thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheater related stories. See you there.